Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to show you is how you can get a resource from a URL and turn it into a file from the perspective of JavaScript. So I'm going to start by creating a file from an image URL but the steps I'm going to be following you can use for any commonly accepted file type. So it could be a PDF, could be a Word document. In this case it's an image and after that I'm going to be creating a file from this CSV here. So let's start with the image. So here I have fetched an image from Lauren Pixum. So the way it works is it's an API that returns a random image of given dimensions. So if you type in pixum.photos forward slash and then you give the dimensions, you'll get an image at random of those dimensions. So we'll use, that's a bit dark. Let's use the next image. Okay, so I'm going to copy this URL into my JavaScript and I'm going to use fetch to get the data. Now to access the result of a fetch request you use the then method and then you have available to you the result in a function that you pass in there. So usually what you do when you have JSON data which is usually what you get back when you contact an API you say res.json but this won't work here because what we're fetching it's not in JSON format, it's an image. So we end up with this error. So what you need to do here is instead use a different method. And the method you use to create a file is the blob method. So blob stands for binary large object, and it's a versatile container that can contain various types of data. Now, even though it's termed binary large object, it's a bit of a misnomer because it's very commonly used for files that are small in size as well. And the blob that we are creating, it's going to be available in the next then statement because the blob is the return value of the first then statement. So it's available as a parameter in the next one. And let's log the contents of that blob to the console so we can have a closer look at it. So a blob, it only has two properties. So the first one, it's size that's measured in bytes. And the second one is the type of file expressed as a MIME type. Now, in case you're not familiar with MIME types, they're just a universally recognized way of describing the data that is contained within a file. So you can see here that it's automatically been set for us to image forward slash JPEG. Some other common MIME types that you come across are text forward slash plain. And then there's this kind of catch-all application octet stream MIME type which is used when somebody doesn't know what kind of MIME type a file should have, or it's set that way by default. But there are lots of MIME types that are much more specific. So for a Microsoft Word document, it would be application forward slash MS Word. For a CSV file, text forward slash CSV. Now, thankfully, when you fetch data like we have, the MIME type is set automatically for you. If you create a blob from scratch using the constructor, you actually have to set this MIME type yourself, but thankfully you don't have to worry about it when you're fetching a resource. So something you might be wondering is what's the difference between a blob object and a file object? So in JavaScript, you also have a file object, and that is what is returned when a user selects a file from their system using a form input element. So I can actually convert this blob into a file using the file constructor. So I'll do that now, and then we'll take a look at the difference between the blob and the file. So to create a new file, the first argument has to be the blob itself. So I just passed the blob in there, and it has to be contained in an array. The second argument, you can add a file name. So I'll call this image, and you need to set the mind type. So we can get that by calling blob.type, so that's already stored on the type property on the blob. And then I'll save this to a reference and we'll take a look at the file in the console. And I'm also going to log the blob so that we can compare both the blob object and the file object. So you can see that for the file object, there's more information on it than there was for the blob. We still have size and type, but there's also last modified, 
and a name for the file. Now let's take a look at the methods available for this file object on its prototype. So these are methods that are specific to a file object and help you update some of the meta information that we just saw. If we take a look down here though, you see that the prototype on the file, it's actually inheriting the same methods as for a blob. And that is because the underlying data in a file object, it's exactly the same as it is for a blob. So a file contains more meta information on it, but from the perspective of the JavaScript engine, a blob object and a file object are both treated as files. You can use them interchangeably in your code. So in your code, a blob and a file, they're both treated as files by JavaScript. So one thing you can do is to read the file. So for that, you can use the native file reader. So you can create a new file reader by calling the constructor and I'll save the new file reader under the reference fr and then you use a method on the new instance to decide how you want to read the data so this is an image I'm going to read it as a data URL and you pass in there the file that you want to read so instead of logging the blob to the console instead I'm going to pass it in to the new function that I've created. So I'll call the parameter that I'm passing in input. And then the reading takes a little bit of time. So you have to add an event listener to the file reader. And then the result is always available on the result property on the file reader. So it's available here. So I'll save a reference as res and then log that to the console so we can see what the output of the file reading is. So the output is a data URL which as you can see is very long for a URL and the reason is that the data itself is contained in the URL so it's string encoded. Now this is very powerful because it means that the image can be passed through local storage in string format. It can also be passed as a parameter in a URL to another page or a server. So this is one way that you can read the file that you've fetched in JavaScript by creating a data URL to the file. Now just to show you that we get the same result if we passed in the file object because a blob and a file, they work interchangeably here. So again, we get the data URL and actually I can copy that and if I paste it as the URL in a new window you see that we see the image because it's contained in the string that I entered. Another option is to read the file as text so for that in the file reader you change the method of reading to text. Now in the case of an image this doesn't really make any sense because the image is not a text file so you just get some very unuseful text back like this. But it would make sense to read it as text if the file that you have fetched is a text-based file. So I'm going to change now what I'm fetching from this random image to the local file that I have here, which is my CSV .csv. So the steps actually remain the same. I fetch the file and then I'm reading it into a blob. The blob is then being passed into read file. And then I'm reading this CSV as text, which makes a lot more sense because it's a text file. And I could also, if I wanted to, create a data URL to this CSV file. So if I try to open that, so it's opening in Visual Studio Code. So this isn't the file that I have here, my csv.csv. This is a download and you can see it contains exactly the same data. So this is how you can get a resource from a URL and turn it into a readable file in JavaScript. Now remember, you don't have to turn it into a file object type. A blob is a type of file and then you can use it in the file reader or anything else that accepts a blob.
Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video because it helps us with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.